Hey guys, it's your boy APT Songs, and today we are celebrating a very special anniversary. Today is the 10th year anniversary of me releasing my most popular and well-known song. Obama, 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 Obama. Yeah. I figured it would be good to kind of go over today uh, how the song came about, why I created it in the first place, and then more importantly, the huge, huge response that it got and its popularity, and of course, what happened after I released that song. So stay tuned, we're doing a little behind the scenes with APT Songs and the Obama Millie Remix. Ten years ago, I was living in Atlanta, and I had moved there because I wanted to do music. Specifically, I wanted to make beats for other artists and figured that I could just sell them beats and they would get on the beats that they liked and make songs out of them. I'd been in Atlanta for like a year and a half, and nobody had bought anything. But nobody knew who I was. I was working full time as a server and I didn't have a car so I couldn't really get out to clubs to meet people to give them my beats. So I spent most of my time at home trying to figure out how to get my stuff out there. It just so happened that I also got a Kodak camera that aside from taking pictures could also do video. So I started experimenting with doing little music videos here and there cause I you know, make my own beats and start rapping over them and put them out on YouTube just as a means to see how this whole YouTube thing works. Some of my videos were getting a few views here and there and I thought to myself, how could I possibly get people to know that I was a songwriter and also a beat maker. I had gone on to WordPress and seen that there was this guy named Jonathan Coltrane, and he was a guy that played guitar, he had just had a daughter, and he had always wanted to be a musician. So he started putting out a song every single week for an entire year. And in the course of that year, he ended up being able to go on tour and like really become a real musician that was selling music on his website. So I saw this and was like, you know what? I could totally do that. Like I have time in the all the time in the world to write songs and come up with concepts and maybe if I do that and put them out there then people will see that not only am I a good writer but I'm also a good beat maker with his concept he just did songs and occasionally now and then he'd do videos and I thought to myself well I'll take this one step further and I'll put out a video a week for an entire year which in hindsight was ridiculous because I didn't know or realize how much work was gonna actually be involved in doing that. But that's what I decided to do. So on May 25th of 2008, I started my project. And I guesstimated it would probably take me like anywhere from a half a year to the whole year for people to see my stuff and know who I was. And it happened a lot faster than that. You gotta remember around 2008 was also the time when there were two cosmically big events happening. One was that Senator Obama, Barack Obama, was running to be the front runner candidate for the presidential election on the Democratic side of the ticket. Also at that time, Lil Wayne was huge. Like he was putting out mixtape after mixtape and his stuff just started gaining in popularity to the point where his release that year for the Carter Three album actually sold over a million copies in that first week. So it just so happened that these two events merged at the same time. And his most high profile song off of that album was this song called A Millie. You're tougher than Nigerian hair, my criteria compared to your career just isn't fair. I'm a venereal disease like a menstrual bleed. Now as you can hear, A Millie itself had the drone in the background of A Millie, A Millie, A Millie, A Millie. And when I first heard the song, I, I, I gotta be honest, I was late getting to Lil Wayne's stuff because I was not necessarily the biggest fan of his from his earlier things, but by the time I heard a Millie, it had already been out for like a couple of months. I heard it one day going to work and was like, okay, this is like, okay, it's awesome. And then the more I heard it, just the better it got to me. So for this project that I was doing, I was originally planning to just do original songs, but I come from a background of doing parodies. Like I released a parody album in college and I've been a huge fan of Weird Al Yankovic for ages. Been to his concerts, everything. It's, I'm a huge freaking fan. I listen to him every day to this day. And so I was really more brought up on like being able to take other people's songs and remake the words into something that's funny. So after I did my song number four, I realized that I just had a bug to do a parody song. 
I've been listening to Amelia a lot. I realized how popular it was. And a good judge for a song that's going to be a good parody is something that just the whole public likes. And at that point, every known rapper, every unknown rapper was trying to put out a freestyle of some kind on the Amelia beat because it was just that infectious. I didn't want to just take the Amelia Amelia beat and just make a rap over that and have that be the song of the week. I wanted to have a conceptual song that would work well and be funny to at least people, the people that I knew, because people that I knew knew that I did parodies. I was going to work one day, like I was, I was, I was walking around waiting for people to come to the restaurant to serve them, and I was like, okay, what can I do with the Amili song to make it not Amili? And so my original thought was actually to say my name, so it'd be like A P T A P T A P T A P T, and I thought that was clever, but nobody really knew who I was, so it was only going to resonate so much. Then I thought. Maybe I could use John McCain's name. Now, I wasn't, I'm not gonna say that I was like a supporter of John McCain politically, but I had seen him on SNL and some other things where he was funny and he seemed like an overall likable guy. And admittedly, I'd seen him more than I saw Obama. So I tried messing with that, like, you know, John McCain, John McCain, John McCain, John McCain, and it just didn't flow. And then I remember clear as day, I'd walked to the back kitchen and I walked out onto the floor. And as soon as I walked out to the floor of the restaurant, the first thought I had was, Obama, 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 Obama. And I literally just burst out laughing. It was like, this, it just flowed so perfectly. It sounded great. It, it sounded as monotonous as the Amelie, Amelie, Amelie. And I just, I just thought that was, the, the instant reaction that I had was I was laughing so hard that I was like, this has got to be the song. Few problems though. The first problem was that I didn't know anything about Obama. Like I knew he was black, and I knew he was a Democrat, and he was running from Chicago. That's, that's literally all that I knew, okay? So I had to really do some research into what Obama was about. Luckily, I had a friend at the time who was a girl that lived up in DC that was a huge Obama fan. And I literally could just go to her Facebook page and look up all facts about Obama, um, as well as some other sites. But like, she, she was a good help for that. Uh, I looked up some more research. I watched some more news clips on YouTube just to really get an idea of what he was about, what he stood for, his platform, etc. After I solved that problem, I had another problem. I thought, like many of the other parodies that I, I've done before, I could just go to YouTube or go to some other site and find a karaoke version of the Amelie beat to use for my song without the words Amelie being repeated a hundred bunch of times. And it did not exist. There was no single instrumental version of that song I could find that did not have the words Amelie said a bunch of times. And so what that meant was that I would have to recreate the beat from scratch just so I could record myself saying Obama, Obama a bunch of times. And that's what I did. I had a program called FL Studio. You guys might know as Fruity Loops, but I literally tried to find the instruments that were used in the original song and recreate them. And so I had to listen to that song over and over again to really listen into the beat patterns, the drums that they were using. And what I discovered is like, there's really only like five instruments that are using that entire song. It's like a snare drum, it's like a tap, it's a kick. Like it, they're very, very actually simplistic instruments used to make these this beat of a milli. And so once I got it down, it got down to where I could, I could barely tell the difference between my version and the original version. And then I was able to record Obama, Obama, and then just like cut and paste it so I wouldn't have to keep saying it over and over again. But once I made the beat and I knew the information about Obama, then there was one more problem. A milli, structure-wise and flow-wise, is a very hard song to duplicate. I mean, this is one of the few songs where Lil Wayne's flow is just so ridiculous because it changes styles, he changes wordings, he's pausing and stopping at some points, he's saying some things fast, some things slow, and there's no like chorus structure. It's really just three straight verses of things. And there are some hard rhymes in there that I had to try to figure out. So there was a lot. Like it took me a good two days to actually write the song. And what I had to do, I had to literally, I would catch the train to work because I didn't have a car at the time. So during the train ride to work, which is about a 30, 45 minute ride, I would listen to the song on repeat on my Discman over and over again. Yes, Discman, this is how far this goes back. So I listen to the song ad nauseum, and then when I'm there, I'm just trying to play it in my head. On my breaks, I'm listening to it. On the way back home, I'm listening to it. I get home, I'm listening to it some more. And I did this for like two or three days, okay? Now keep in mind, I'm doing a song a week. So I only had a week's time to figure out the rhyme pattern, record the song, record the beat, and do the video. 
Okay, so I literally took a good two days to write this song. Not like a full two days, but like I would spend a good like three or four hours a day trying to put together the structure of the song, how I wanted things to rhyme, where I'm gonna put certain subject matters about the song into this song. And then once I figured out the lyrics of the song, there's still the issue of me having to actually mouth the song on camera. And I don't know it that well. So it became interesting because I knew that I didn't have to necessarily know the whole song because there are gonna be parts I'm gonna put in pictures and stuff in the video, but I had to know enough of it to where it matched on camera without having to do a whole bunch of takes. So I spent a good day after I recorded it just listening to it nonstop. Didn't record a video yet, just listened to it over and over and over and over again. And I wanted to make sure that I was on the right path with this. And the people at my job knew that I was doing this video project. So I had recorded the song and I took it to work one day and I let like two people just kind of listen to it and I literally would just press play. And as soon as they heard Obama, Obama, without even hearing the rest of the song, they would burst out laughing. And they were like, oh my God, this is genius. So I knew I was on the right track. But uh, so that Saturday, cause I put these videos out every Sunday. So that Saturday, I figured, okay, I'm gonna make the video. What am I gonna do for a video? And so what I decided to do was I threw up this thing, just see it looks kind of fuzzy now, but basically I had a blue, blue blanket and I had a printer that could print out some pictures of Obama, so I put them there. But here's the thing, my printer at the time was like very, very low on ink. And so that's why there's only three pictures, because you see by the third picture, there is starting to get pink at the bottom, which means that the ink's running out. So that's why there's only three pictures and this blue sheet in the background. So I was like, okay, so I can't have all the pictures that I wanna have, what am I gonna do? So in the video, what I decided to do was dress up as three different people. You're, your young voter that's like 18 and just starting to vote, your middle-aged voter that sees in the prime of his working years and he wants to vote for Obama, and then your elder statesman who's clearly got a hat and is just kind of like, I'm here to vote for Obama, oh my God. And so I figured if I just switch between those three versions of myself and then mix them some pictures, I'd have a video. Like that's really as far as I thought it because I really didn't think this video was gonna get much traction. I figured the parody's funny, a few people will watch it that I know from school that know I used to do parodies and they'll think it's funny, ha, ha, ha. And then I'll move on to next week's video and that'll be it. Put the, I, I got my parts for the video, had the song done. Believe it or not, it took me eight hours to put together my video. And then I released it out into the world on Sunday. And the first day that I, that I put it up, it got a couple hundred hits and I was like, this is awesome because the, the, the video before that the week prior had gotten like 150 hits uh it was a song about my dad it was very very emotional because he passed away when i was younger and so my mom had seen it he she shared people in the family and they all liked it so like oh my family's watching my videos this is great but when i posted the obama one i was just like again people from school will watch it people in my family will watch it and then i'll go on to the next thing well the next day the video had jumped up to like 500 views and i was like that's kind of awesome, all right? I'm getting I'm getting my little YouTube traction going on, it's pretty sweet. And then the next day, it got up to like a thousand views. And I was like, oh man, this is awesome. This is freaking sweet. And then it just exploded. I went on that next morning and it was up to like 3,000 views. And by that afternoon, it was up to like 5,000 views. And it just kept getting more views. By the end of that first week, the video must have had at least like a good 10,000 or so views. And I was like, that's awesome. This is this is probably about as good as it gets. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Now, in hindsight, I will say that the one thing that disappointed me about, most about the rollout of this was that I was very not knowledgeable about what happens when a song takes off. You know, I didn't know about you know, for example, it started getting played on radio. That was awesome. But people also started like trying to take the song that I made and then make their own version about Obama. Cause like, in the beginning, there's just Obama, Obama with no words for me. So people would take that and then remake the beat that I remade and then make their own song. Um, so that was kind of weird. But there were a lot of cool parts in terms of like, I had radio stations calling me to interview me about the song. I got tons and tons and tons of messages from people on YouTube as well as on my website for my project saying that, oh my gosh, this thing's so great and where can I download it? And I just heard it in a club somewhere. And so there were, I had a lot of good feelings overall about the song in terms of it being released, in terms of getting out there. I had a lot of people write me and say that, 
they didn't even know who Obama was, but thanks to my song, they were going to now vote for him. So I definitely know that my song had an impact on the election in terms of people getting more acquainted with him and wanting to find out more about him. I had teachers writing me saying they were using this, the song in their schools to teach their kids about politics and about Obama. And I want to remind you people, I was doing a parody of a Lil Wayne song. So there were some semi inappropriate lines in the song. I talk about one or two hook up with Michelle Obama and not in those terms. I talk about, you know, John McCain in a mean way and um, some other people in a mean way. Like, it's like, so there are parts of it that were just kind of like, why would you use this in a school to teach kids? That was just funny to me. But again, however people want to use my art to be able to help the next generation or help the current generation, I, I was all for. And the other nice thing that came out of that was that even after this song was released, I continued to do my video projects. So I was still releasing a video a week for a year. And with that consistency, I had people that would reach out to me to ask me to help them on some projects, some of which I got paid for decently enough to be able to move out to California. And that's how I got here. I got paid to do a project. And at that point I was like, where do I really wanna go next? And I was like, California is the place to be. There's people out there that wanna work with me. I have friends out there from college and I can really get myself grounded in the entertainment industry in whatever capacity that is, whether it's me doing my own stuff, whether it's me, you know, helping on other sets and stuff like that, or helping people with other projects. But that's what the song allowed me to do. So that was like one of those things where it really came down to like, I almost didn't do the song about Obama. I really almost did it about McCain. And had McCain's name not sounded so weird on that beat, who knows if that song would have gotten as big as it did. But it definitely was a life-changing event. I was so happy to hear it being played all around the world on my page. So let me tell you about YouTube back in the day. So back in the day, if you did songs on YouTube that had other people's beats, they would take your channel down. So I didn't get my channels taken down for the Obama song, but I used like some Mariah Carey beats on some songs. And I remember using some other people's beats on songs and they would shut it down. This is before what they do now where they just say, okay, we're using somebody else's beat. So we're going to just uh, give them the money anytime your thing gets played, which I'm totally fine with. but. Back in the day, that wasn't the case. So in terms of my views of the video on my channel, uh, it's at like five, 600,000, but that's because my channel got shut down like twice that year. And I had to keep re restarting a new channel and putting the Obama song up along with some other songs that I had up for my project. But what was nice is that other people downloaded my song because I eventually allowed it to be a, a free release on my page. Like I put up a link with a mixtape and said, download it. And the day that Obama got elected, my mixtape, the AP, I think it was the APT mixtape or whatever, uh, got downloaded 10,000 times. So because of that, a lot of people re-uploaded the song onto their pages. And so my hits for that song were well over like 20 million hits. Just if you, if you type in Obama Millie Remix on YouTube right now, you will see the amount of people that have reposted it. And in fact, it's 10 years now. And just like a month ago, I always, every, every six months, for vanity's sake, I'll just check on YouTube to say, okay, who has uploaded Obama Millie Remix today? And as the years have gone on, it's been less and less, but like two months ago, somebody reposted up the video, uh, like a almost like a syrupy slowed down version of it, which sounds really, really awesome. And it's just like, that's from 10 years ago. So stuff I put out 10 years ago is still being enjoyed and liked and uploaded to this day. And it's absolutely incredible. So I just wanted to do a little recap for you guys about that because this was like my biggest song. And the nice thing is, you know, people always ask like, well, have you done anything since then? It's like, yes, I put out albums. I put out other songs. Uh, I actually did another Obama parody in 2012 when he ran for re-election called Vote Obama Style, which is a parody of Gangnam Style, which is a very, very big song that year. And that song made me a decent amount of money. I made a video for it, got a lot of hits, I got a lot of buys. I was able to finally get a car off of that because with the Obama Millie remix, that was the time when I didn't know how to get my songs to iTunes. And so because of that, I wasn't able to profit off the song as much as I wanted to. So when the, the next election cycle came out, I knew how to get my song on radio. I knew how to get the video up. I knew I was a partner at that point with YouTube so I could get money from the views on that. And so the lessons that I learned from the first Obama song, I was able to capitalize on for the second one and it worked out great. So everybody that ever heard the song or downloaded it or shared it with friends, I want to say thank you so much because you guys really changed my life. I couldn't be in California now without the support of you guys buying the song and just being a fan of mine in general. And you can continue to buy my stuff. I have an album out now called the Black Lives Matter album, which you can get at blacklivesmattermusic.com. I'm continuing to do parody songs. I now own puppets. You may have seen some of them on, this, on my YouTube channel, but they do songs as well and little skits and stuff like that. And I continue to have stuff coming out. So 
stay tuned for all that. But in the meantime, once again, thank you so much for all your support these past 10 years, especially with the Obama Millie remix, that song. Oh, and I wrote Lil Wayne when he was in jail. I wrote Lil Wayne and I wrote him and said, thank you so much for releasing this song. I did a parody to it and it changed my life. And he wrote something back on his uh, website that said, you know, oh, awesome, man, thanks. And I was just really happy, honestly, that he did not sue me because it was a parody. So technically under parody law, I have a right to release a song, but you know, artists could have been like, hey, that's not cool. I'm gonna like take your stuff. And I'm glad that hasn't happened. So thank you also to Lil Wayne. <laughs> Oh, man. I can't wait for Carter 5. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I'm APT Songs. Feel free to check out the videos on my channel. All the videos that I did from that project back in the day are still on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash APT Songs. So if you want to see what I looked like back then at 26 and you want to see the evolution of my videos and whatnot, then definitely check that out. I will say, doing that video, once it became popular, I realized that, oh, people are watching my videos. I need to do better videos. And that actually got me started on my video editing journey to now, where I actually people hire me out to do video editing for them. And it all started because of this project and specifically because of this song getting so big. So that's all I got. I'm ABT Songs. Thanks for watching this. And I will check with you later. Peace.